All right, guys, welcome to a, another beer review, and uh, I'm feeling a little bit crabby today, so it's fitting that we've got a Krabby's product. But uh, before I start, disclaimer, I'm starting to come down a little bit of a cold. My voice start, keeps starting to crack up, making me sound like I'm going through puberty again. Not that I've got the most masculine of voices in the first place, let's be honest. Um, and yeah, so hopefully I don't have a massive sneeze and fit like I did before I start recording this video, even though this is like take seven now because I keep croaking and I'm getting paranoid that my nose is running on camera. So I apologise if you start to see glistening streaks running down my nose over my obscenely big chin. But um, yeah, so two weeks before Christmas, potentially coming down for cold. So why not do a beer review when I'm at my peak? But um, yeah, so we've got a collaboration between Krabby's and Sadler's. And this is a fairly new beer. And it's basically Krabby's uh, alcoholic ginger beer blended with Sadler's IPA. And I'm picking this up from my local Tesco's, but I'm sure it's available in most places now. And I like it when we get new supermarket beers because they come with this uh, really fancy neckerchief, I suppose you could call it. But um, yeah, so I'm not going to lie. I do like Krabby's. Not had it for quite a while. I know it's not exactly the greatest alcoholic uh, ginger beer. Um, my personal favourite was um, Ginger Beard from Witchwood, which... I'm sure they stopped producing it, but I've seen people posting photos on the various Witchwood groups. So something tells me that there could be a few bottles um, floating around, which I'm very excited about. But um, yeah, I've not had a Krabby's for quite a while. I know they've got a few different flavours and uh, yeah, I was pretty partial to them, to be honest. And um, yeah, so when I heard that they were doing a collaboration with Sadler's and doing an IPA, it got me quite excited, to be honest. Big fan of Sadler's. They do some absolutely wonderful beers. And like I said, Krabby's I am partial to. So yeah, this is basically a blend of the IPA and Krabby's ginger beer. So I'll quickly read what it says on the back. Uh, Krabby's IPA is handcrafted blend of iconic Krabby's alcoholic ginger beer and red IPA from Sadler's Ales. This mix creates a uniquely deep fruity flavour from the hops, countered with a fresh bite of ginger for a rich spicy finish. And uh, it goes into a little bit about the history of Krabby's, I suppose, which I, I won't go into that. So this was produced and bottled for John Crabby & Co over at the Windsor Castle Brewery Limited. Um, I'm not too familiar with those. I might have actually reviewed one of their beers. I'm not too sure. So it's technically a Crabby's product, but brewed in collaboration with um, Sadler's. So yeah, intriguing concept, but I'm sure there's countless ginger IPAs, to be honest, out there. But I was very, very happy when uh, I saw that they were doing this and uh, yeah stuff like this intrigues me a lot more than like the bigger hyped new releases if you know what I mean <clears throat> so yeah 4% 4.7 4 4.7% ABV in a 500ml bottle and uh, yeah gluten free as well which is always good and uh, yeah there's a, a really cool crown so um, yeah very interesting stuff I know that um You'd have to excuse me, it must be pick up all these horrible sounds that I'm making. But uh, I think uh, Dave from Cheshire Homebrew has reviewed this. So uh, I'll put his link down below. Awesome guy. He comments a lot on when we're doing our streams. And he does his uh, Two Beers Friday, where he compares two different beers. And I'm actually thinking of, after doing this, picking up another bottle in the future and making my own ginger ale and IPA blend. And doing a little bit of a face-off. Anyway, we'll come to that bridge when I remember to cross it, if I ever will. So uh, let's see what we get with this. So, don't think I've had Sadler's Red IPA. Uh, I'm really not too sure. And like I said, it's been quite a while since I had uh, the Krabby's Alcoholic Ginger Beer. So I won't really be able to pinpoint, um, I don't think. So don't misconstrue it as one of those sorts of reviews even though I'm not really anywhere near an expert am I? Uh, but yeah lovely copper finish, copper finish copper look to it, yeah it's been a, a long attempt to try to record this beer review properly yeah lovely rusty copper look to it uh, but it's got that sort of like ready apple look, almost like apple juice um, 
is it's got a little bit of haze there's a little bit of sediment in there which i'm not really putting down to chill haze because there's nothing forming on the the outside of the glass and the uh, beer didn't really pull up any head whatsoever but um yeah it, it looked it's got that sort of like i british ipa look to it anyway so let's see what we get on the aroma if i can get through the puddles of snot forming in my nose Not really getting the ginger. Uh, I was expecting like a bit, like a ginger bite from it. Get that sort of like hoppiness, a sweet caramel backbone. Backbone. If you really do sniff, uh, you do pick up a very subtle ginger, I suppose. It's got actually quite pronounced sturfiness to it, which I was not expecting. Which I suppose that comes into play with ginger, um, I suppose. I'm not too sure. Great review so far, isn't it? Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's sweet. Hoppy. I'm definitely getting more of that like IPA, very British IPA aroma. With maybe just a tiny bit of a ginger bite. So hopefully it comes out a little bit more on the flavour. So let's find out. Cheers. Okay, yeah, the ginger beer does actually come out a lot more when you actually taste it. In fact, it's almost like the, the complete opposite, although not as um, in your face. On the aroma, it's all about the IPA, but that ginger spicy character comes out a hell of a lot more and sort of overpowers that IPA character. Tingly on the tongue. It's got that like hot synthetic ginger flavour to it, it has to be said. But it works well with that malty backbone. Although the body's not as bold as I thought it would be, to be honest. Hops had a little bit of sweetness. It's not a really green tasting beer. It's it's more sweet with a little bit of a heat on the back end, mixed in with that very slight hoppy bitterness. Yeah, that's an intriguing one for sure. Um, it's one of those beers, and this sounds really friggin' dumb, but it's one of those beers that I could see a lot of people really enjoying, a lot of people really not liking, and a lot of people just thinking, eh, it's, it's, you know, you get these flavour combinations of people like hype them up, and it's like, no, it just tastes like two things together. It doesn't really blend amazingly. There is like a nice blend. It does add a little bit of heat to the IPA, I suppose. But I don't know. I really don't know about this one. I mean, it's tasty. It's enjoyable. But I don't know if it's if it completely works and if it's been pulled off as best as it could be. The aftertaste is really, really nice. If you like your ginger beer, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and you like that actual bite to it, then you're going to enjoy that. And it does leave your palate a little bit dry, so you want to go in for another sip. Yeah, I mean, I like it. It's 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 a nice little novelty, I suppose. Something a little bit different. Um, I do think that ginger could play a really good part in an IPA. I'm sure, like I said at the start, there are uh, IPAs out there that have the in inclusion of ginger within its blend. I know some maybe a bit more Christmassy beers, being it festive season where you get those Christmas spices. But I think ginger can really stand out. I know it works well in lagers, from what I've heard. So I think that heat and bite in maybe a bit more of a fruitier IPA, I don't think this really works too, much, too well on a malty scale. IPA wise because uh, ginger can work beautifully with a really heavy malt build you know like all the pumpkin spice beers that we get or pumpkin pie beers and like some of the more winter seasonals which are primarily or fundamentally malt based 
So I think in terms of an IPA in ginger, you'd want a bit more of a vibrant, fruitier IPA. But it's not bad. Uh, it's very drinkable. Um, it doesn't really taste too alcoholic. So you could seriously get absolutely obliterated on this because, you know, that IPA character is the... But it's that the more you drink it, the more the ginger ale comes out and then it starts to become like a pretty much a ginger ale with a tiny bit of a hoppiness and a more caramel sweetness to it. So it is one that you could get devilishly carried away with, which is both a good thing and a bad thing. But you know what? It's a nice little novelty. It's a, something a little bit different. Uh, maybe with a bit of work and trying different beer styles, because I think Sadler's, they, they know what they're doing when it comes to brewing beer. So I don't think you could think of too many more well-established breweries to try and attempt something like this. So maybe with a little bit of a tweak, maybe trying different beers and blending it and maybe changing the, maybe it's, you know, because I don't know if this is like 50-50 or um, if, the, I don't know what the proportions are, to be honest, uh, much like my, my body, the proportions are very confused. Um... But yeah, it, it sort of works, but it could work a hell of a lot better. And you can see that there's a really good fundamental idea there. And with a little bit of tinkering, a little bit of tweaking, a bit more experimentation, maybe being a little bit more bold, then they could pull off something really, really intriguing. And this is an intriguing thing. It's, excuse me, it's definitely one that I would highly recommend that you try for yourselves. And you know what? Hopefully in the future... I'm going to try something like this because I saw, um, I think it was Rob JB Adventures who shared um, this article on how to blend different flavours and spices into your beers by using like a like a French coffee press. So you put all your like your big ingredients, your herbs, your fruits and that in the bottom and pour the beer over the top. Then as if you were making, you know, filter coffee or you know, French press coffee, then pour it in and you've got all that blend without having the little bits in there. So... Yeah, I'd love to try something like this, do my own little experimentation series, because I do really enjoy ginger beer, alcoholic and non-alcoholic, and I do enjoy Krabbies, and I think the Krabbies shines a little bit more um, than the IPA does. But it's a salt enough brew, and with a little bit of work, it could be something quite special. So, although I would try it again, I'm in no rush to really do so. Um, I'd rather experiment with my own little... Uh, take on it before I did that so I'm going to give this one a, a six and a half out of ten so definitely give it a go if you want something a little bit different if you like a bit of a heat in your IPA but beware that it does sort of take over and uh, yeah I need to do a, a review of the regular Krabby's beer or alcoholic ginger beer also need to do a review of the red IPA from um, Sadler's I thought the Peaky Blinder was their red IPA, unless they do other red IPAs, I'm not too sure. Uh, so yeah, check out both Krabby's and Sadler's down below. Uh, of course, who did I mention as well? Uh, check out Windsor Castle Brewery in the link down below as I wipe my nose on camera, very professional. And uh, yeah, like I said, check out Dave from Cheshire Home Brew's review of this one. And of course, if any of my fellow friends and YouTubers have reviewed it as well, their links will be down below. So check out my RPA playlist, check out my English Real Ale playlist, and more importantly, I hope that you'll join me next time uh, when I'm sounding a little bit better. Fingers crossed, anyway. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, see you all later. Cheers.